Hello folks, you are nearly at the end of your working week. I hope you are having a marvellous day. Let's get into some hobby nightmares, shall we? If you like what I do, the subscribe button is down below, and if you really like what I do, then the Patreon button is also down below in the, in the description. If you want to buy me a beer this weekend, and also, uh, if you're getting anything model-wise, Composite Games is the place to go. The promo code is for that is also down below. They do international shipping now, and the um, outside of the EU as well. So if you need, need that, then the uh, instructions are in the community part of the YouTube channel. Head over there, have a little look, and see what's up. So... Hobby Nightmares. Let's get into it, shall we? Alrighty. Caiaphas says... Aha. This is a long one. Oh my god. That's what she said. Most definitely what she said. So. Call me Caiaphas, he says. I have done. Hello North, Caiaphas again. And decided I should give you a more positive hobby story. This takes place throughout the first semester of university, and how the friends I've made through the hobby have helped me through a really tough time. This is cool. So I was hoping to do like more of a positive one, so I, I got this one picked out for me, which is very nice. Uh, the start of university is always a really tough time. You know, um, when I went, I will say that I was very, very lucky, because I went to university at the age of 24. So... I had already had quite a good grounding in life. This is North talking now. I'd already had quite a good grounding in life. I'd worked in bars. I'd seen the, the nastier side of the workplace, you know what I mean? So I'd seen what was out there and what was coming my way if I didn't do very well at university. So it sort of lit a fire under my backside when I went in there. And I feel like I appreciated it a lot more than other people. Um, mainly because if I was going to a normal university, I don't think I would have felt that way. But I, w I went to Durham, somehow I got into Durham, like I, I begged and pleaded my way in and, and snuck in through the back door essentially, and, and went. Um, and I, I do feel like I appreciated it a lot more than people around me, because they were going to university because it was the, the next natural step in their life, and everything in their life had been going well up until that point, and university was the next step, you know what I mean? Whereas with me... It was like, oh my god, I'm not just at a university, I'm, I'm at Durham, and this is this is ridiculous. Like, you know, I, I have a very good friend who did archaeology at university, at Liverpool University, and it's a pretty good uni. Um, but when I told him I was going to Durham, he was like, Jesus, dude, like that, that's that's big, like that's not, uh, make sure you work hard. And when I went there, I feel like I um, appreciated it a lot more than those around me. But anyway, I wonder if Caiaphas has had the same thing. We'll see. So... He says, I should probably set the scene first. On the first night of university, I met somebody we'll call M. We originally met on a university group chat, and I was meeting with them and a few other people I'd met from that group chat. We got fairly close after that night out, and getting absolutely hammered, and I'm sure you can guess how I ended up feeling about them. Oh, okay. We were constantly meeting up when we had a spare moment, and we just kept getting closer. Okay. Is the hobby in this at all? <laughs> now the nightmare. So, M and me out, go out to go clubbing. Clubbing, sorry. And a few of our mutual friends come with us. We meet up first at a pub, had a few drinks, then went to a few clubs together because we hadn't been out drinking together for a while. Anyway, we then proceeded to meet up with mutual friends in a club where they were pulled aside. And I was led upstairs to the table where our friends were sitting. They kept asking if I was okay, to which I was confused. I mean, why wouldn't I be? Then, I get a text from M, asking me to come outside. There, M tells me that they, um... Okay. There, M tells me that they sexually assaulted somebody, and needless to say, they were sobbing telling me this. Honestly, at this point, I was already in shock. I go back inside to the club and proceed to have quite a few more drinks, staring into space, barely talking to friends. When I'm just when I'm just about okay to talk, one of my very drunk friends comes along. She proceeds to show me the DMs between her, M, where M said, you probably guessed it, that they liked me back. Honestly, that, all on top of what I learned that night, broke me. Okay. Now to the positive part. The day after was a 40k gaming night, 
and honestly, I wasn't sure I wanted to play. But I decided the worst thing that could happen is I play against a friend of mine, which is exactly what happened. Let's call them L. They're an amazing friend, and even though I lost to their, to their Iron Warriors, it was an extremely fun match. Probably one of the best I've ever had in my relatively short time in the hobby. Honestly, that game really helped me in the short term. Furthermore, I was able to actually discuss what happened with one of my friends in the hobby, and they were constantly checking up on me during the gaming night and making sure I was okay. Okay, um, were you the one, like, assaulted? Because, like, this seems really random. Why would somebody <clears throat> pull you outside and just tell you they've sexually assaulted somebody? I'm confused. Why has that happened? I mean, like, it just doesn't seem to... to, to I want that explained. If you can message back in and explain to me why they did that. Or why it affected you so badly. Okay, you like this person. Okay. And then they say that to them. You just walk back into the club. You didn't ask any questions. You didn't say, well, what do you mean? What did you do? Because for all you know, they pinched somebody's ass in a joking way. They, the other person got offended. And then they think they've sexually assaulted someone. You don't know. Right? You literally just heard what they said. Gone, oh. And then walked back in to the club. And been miserable all night. Um, some more context, please. Uh, that night really helped, honestly. More than I think either of them will ever know. And really helped me actually comprehend what had happened. And accept that I'm worth more than dating somebody who sexually assaulted somebody. And that I should really cut them out of my life. When wonderful people like those that are in the local Warhammer community exist. And are going to be with me through thick and thin. It's not just that. Going to the pub every Wednesday after meeting up for playing such painting with the Wargaming Society really helped me take my mind off what had happened and helped me through it. Okay, um, I, I, I'm so glad that happened, man. Um, I'm not sure why this has scarred you for life in such a real way. I think I think you've cut something out here. I think there's been I think to save the other person's skin or to save the embarrassment you feel about what happened before. You've either changed something or cut something out from earlier on in the story. As I read more of these, you know, I start to really pick apart the, the, the logic where it breaks down. And be like, okay, that's either been changed or or not a lie, but, but an omission of truth has happened here, right? I'm not being told everything. That's how it feels like in this. If it, if it feels like that part where... She pulled you outside and told you that you know, she sexually assaulted somebody. Okay, cool. I'm assuming it's a she, by the way. It might not be. Um, I'm I'm assuming it's a she. And she brought you outside. She, she told you that she sexually assaulted somebody. The natural thing to do is, to ask, especially if you like the person and you think that they're, they're a good person, is ask them what the hell they're talking about and ask them to explain. You didn't do that. You just walked straight back inside. That's not human behavior. That's not normal human behavior. So yeah, uh, please uh, get back in touch. Tell me if I'm if I'm right or wrong, and why. Um, he says, I guess the main reason I felt this needed saying is because like this, uh, uh, things like this don't get talked about nearly enough, and that the hobby is full of people like this. Sometimes I think you just need to ask for help, and people in this hobby will usually be more than willing to reach out and make sure you're okay. So, to anyone listening going through anything, reach out, because I can guarantee a solid amount of people in the hobby are more than willing to help. Thank, thanks, North Caiaphas. Yeah, to be honest with you, mate, uh, that's a really good message to send. And, and the reaction of people in the hobby to you makes me think that what happened was a lot more serious than what you're letting on. You know, and you haven't told me any, everything, so the context isn't really there for, the, uh, for their behavior later on. Because I know people in the hobby, right? There are some people who will bend over backwards through thick and thin to help you out. Definitely. But there are also 99% of the people in the hobby are normal blokes. We're going to be like, uh, can you not just like leave me alone to throw some dice? <laughs> Unless they see something serious, right? If you come to them with something serious, they say, listen, um, my friend did something really, really bad. Then I'd be like, okay. You know, I, I can then see them going, okay, I can see why that has really got to you, man. Let, let us help you out. People in the hobby are like that. They are legends like that. There are, there are more and more and more of them out there. So yes, if you are going through a really bad time, make sure you talk to somebody. Make sure you go to them and, and you get it out of your system. Anyway, Locutus of Borg says, Here's a horror story from a GT. Grand Tournament. 
that happened about a month ago. Sadly, this story involves a not-so-chill orc player. Oh, no, don't ruin orc players for me. Please. Oh, the cutest. Okay. None of this affected me since I wasn't close to the top tables. But everyone in the store got a front row seat to double man baby rage. I wasn't standing there for the whole thing, and some of this I was told later. So some details might be wrong, but the general story is correct. Okay. Um, I love GT stories. I love Grand Tournament stories. They're, they're hilarious. And because uh, people do get their knickers in a right twist. Going into round four... There were five undefeated players, four of which belonged to one team. The last undefeated player was playing Vertan, and he was facing Orcs in round four. The Vertan player was apparently a bit of a dick. Almost every time his opponent used a rule or stratagem, he would also demand they show him the rule in the codex. That's generally seen as that guy behavior. Not only because it's annoying, but also because it creates an, an incredible time pressure. Yeah, and not, not just that, man. It creates, like, a bad feeling around the table, you know? You're not playing 40k in the right spirit if you're doing things like that. Sure, if you think somebody is cheating, or you think the rules are being bent in a certain way, then feel free to ask... ask. I, I, I'd say you get, like, like two timeouts from me. If, if I've not done anything to show you, to, to like, um, to overtly uh, give you any pressure that I'm, hit, that I'm cheating or, or I'm bending the rules, you get two timeouts to ask for my rules. After that, go fuck yourself, right? If you've asked me, asked me to ask me to show you uh, uh, my rules twice, and I've been proved right twice, that's it. There's no more. There's no third strike, right? That's it. I'm done. I'm not showing my rules again. Go fuck yourself, right? I've done this before. It's ended games. It's ended games before where they've gone. Well, I'm not playing. Somebody won't show me the rules. Okay, let's pack up then, because I'm not stopping every five minutes to show you my rules. I'm not doing it. You know, I'm I'm a truthful player. I pride myself on, on, on making sure that my opponent has a good time. You're not doing that. So, if you don't want to play, no no, no loss to me, man. No, yeah, let, let's, let's pack up and leave it, right? Um, <clears throat> that guy behavior, every single rule, though, I think from the third, if, like, after the second time I, of this guy doing that, I'd be like, okay, uh, what's your issue? What are you seeing that you don't like? And I'll try and correct it. If it, you know, because I'm, I'm playing the rules verbatim as they are in the rule book. So, you know, and I've proved that twice now. I'm not doing it a third time. Just saying. I'm not doing it a third time. Here's what it is. And if they don't want to do that, even if you're in a grand tournament, call a tournament organizer over and say, look, this guy's asking to see every rule I make as I go through. We're, we're timed now. It's, it's taking too long to get through my turn, right? So, can I just get through my turn? Like, I, I've proved twice that I'm not lying and or cheating. You know, can you tell this guy to back off? If he doesn't, I'm calling it, and I'm just like, you know, and especially if you're ahead on points. Do you know what I mean? If you're ahead on points, say, yeah, I'm not playing this guy. You know what I mean? Like, hilarious. If my opponent, this is uh, Makuta saying this, if my opponent asks to see a rule out of my book, I'm required to show him. But it also counts as my time on the chess clock. Yeah, exactly. If I run out of time, I can only, I can only make saves, and that's it. So, it's really unfair to excessively ask to see the rules for anything but incredibly suspicious sounding rules. On this occasion, the team that owned four of the five top spots going into round four decided the Votan guy needed to go down. Good. But this, to be fair, man, like, I, I would have called the tournament organizer that as soon as you did it for like the third time. I'd be like, okay, you're not, I'm, I'm stopping my chess clock. Bang. Stopped it. Right? Every time you ask me to, to do a rule, I'm stopping the clock. Right? Either that or I don't show you my rules. I call the tournament organizer saying, this guy's wasting my time of my turn asking to see every single rule despite me proving twice that I'm not cheating and that, and that you know, all the rules I'm, I'm using are verbatim from the rule book and the codex. So, from now on, if you ask that, I'm stopping this clock. You're not wasting my time. So there's that tactic gone out the window for you. If you want to waste your own time and the time that we have to play this game by, by asking me about my rules... That's on you. That's fair enough. But you're not wasting my time. You know? Simple. Anyway. With the number of players there, uh, there would be two undefeated players at the end of it. And the tiebreaker would be battle points. If the Orc player could keep his opponent from scoring points, Votan winning wouldn't matter. 
Ah, okay, okay, cool. The problem is, he couldn't do that on the tabletop because Orcs have a terrible matchup with Votan. So, the Orcs player decided it was time for the Dwarves to taste their own medicine. Almost every stratagem, rule, data sheet, you name it, he demands to see it whenever the Votan guy wants to use it. While he was at it, he intentionally played very slowly. And with Orcs, if you want to take an hour and a half on one turn, you can very easily do it. Oh my god. I'm going to move this one squad of 50 boys. One. Two. <laughs> like, you'd just be like, I'm going to murder you. <laughs> when time ran out, they were at the end of turn three. The score was 34 to 32 in favour of the Votan. With, with that low score, no matter who won the game, there was no way the Votan player could win the tournament. Dick move, but mission accomplished, I guess. Okay. So, here's where it gets fun. The mission for the round says that whoever holds the objective at the centre of the table at the end of the game scores five points. The Orc player held the center so he said he, he gets the said five points and wins the game the Vatan player was ready for this and said the rules define the end of the game as the end of turn five not when the game is ended thus no one scores the five points and the Vatan player wins wow wow this guy this guy come come ready didn't he they called the judge over and everyone in the store and probably them all could overhear the orc player's side of the very profane conversation. The judge ruled in favour of the Vatan player, because the rules do actually say the end of the game is the end of turn 5. Both players were issued two yellow cards. My understanding is that the orc player refused to submit the results of the game, forcing the, ju the judge to submit it manually and earning himself a, a yellow card. The second yellow was for being a dick. The Vatan player issued one for, for slow play and for being a dick. Both of them rage quit the tournament and left before the next round. Yeah, uh, the hobby is not going to miss either of those two. To be honest with you, I know that the orc player was playing was was, was a fighting fire with fire, but this is what you get for meeting beta behavior with beta behavior, right? This is what you get. Two wrongs don't make a right. Okay, stand aside from it and say, listen, I'm calling out your behavior. It's complete bullshit, and I'm refusing to. to, to I'm refusing to. Go along with it. I'm just not doing it, right? That's the best way to solve this this problem. Um, I, it's very satisfying what the Orc play did here. But it's also like, you know, how do you expect things to get better if you're just going to play into the behavior? It should be noted, this was a very small tournament. Winning it meant absolutely nothing except a small gift card. A few people were preparing for a major, but most of us were just there to roll some dice and get blown off the board by the, by the new guard codex. 95% of the time, the tournament scene is awesome and filled with amazing support of people, but the 5% really ruin the reputation of that side of the hobby for everybody else. Cheers, North Lacutus. Cheers, man. Um, I do agree. Like, the tournament side of the hobby is full of some of the best people you're ever likely to come across in the hobby. Because not only are they decent guys, they're also people who know the rules inside and out. And so they are people who will help you along in your game, should you ask. That's really, really, really cool. And one of the main things about the hobby that I really, really like. It's awesome. It's brilliant. Please make sure. Always, you should always give a tournament a go. If you've never given a tournament a go before, get out there. Have a go. I'm sure you'll enjoy it, right? Now, don't get me wrong. There are people out there who play for blood. That's not a bad thing in itself. You're at a tournament at the end of the day. You should be able to play the biggest, nastiest thing that you've got. That's not the problem I have with most tournament players. The problem I have is that a lot of tournament players I come across are one of the, the two gentlemen in this story. Either the Orc guy or the Vatan guy, right? And it's infuriating, it's irritating, and it, it's, it's borderline cheating. It's borderline cheating, and if it's not cheating, it's being a dick. We need less of it in the hobby. I'm very glad these two rage quit the tournament. I hope they lose in every single tournament that they go forwards in from now on. Can't stand plays like that. You know, it just really, really irks me. And please, you know, if you if you want to check somebody's rules, do so. No problem. 
once you've done it twice though and, and they've cleared twice as in they were right twice shut your mouth <laughs> from that point on you you lose you you get two challenges from that point on you lose the right to challenge and that, unless something's really egregious and obvious that they're cheating fair enough but like from now on no you you, you just got to accept you don't know their codex as, as good as they do right that's it just is what it is i have to do it with gray knights all the time because you know gray knight rules sound more powerful than they are so when i read them out people go oh, can i see that oh yeah you get two you get two i don't say this but i, I show them once they say okay that, that's right and we carry on and then they say oh can i see that yes okay that's right carry on if they ask a third time i'd say no no because i've shown you twice right i'm just gonna say no okay i'll show you this third time right but i'm gonna say now from now on i'm not doing it because i know i'm right with this there you go there's the rule have a little read of it i'm done now man though like like this is this is like this will be the fourth time after this where you're stopping me i'm starting to think that you know i'm not trusted here as a player despite me trying to make sure that you have a good time playing this game so i'd like to play the game in good faith thank you i'm not asking you to show you my to show me your rules i'm just playing the game right best thing to do best thing to do do not meet beta behavior with beta behavior it's just a vicious circle it's just a vicious circle anyway love you all a long time i will speak to you uh either over the weekend or i will speak to you on monday uh, hopefully i'll be on on sunday love you all a long time i will speak to you over the weekend have a lovely rest of your day have a good one bye